Hello, I'm Katie Clemens. I studied at Hughes Hall from 2013 to 2015, uh, doing a PGC in design technology and then studying for an MPhil in education. Um, for, prior to that, I studied architecture at Oxford Brookes University. Um, and when I did my PGC here, I was really interested in gender differences, um, and I developed a scheme of work looking at inclusive design um, practices and I brought in biomimicry tools into the classroom, so things like gloves and glasses that simulate visual impairment and arthritis. Um, and what I found is that girls were really interested in looking at empathy and they really enjoyed um, empathising with other users. And that was something I really wanted to probe as I moved into my MPhil here at Cambridge. Um, and what I was particularly interested in was something called ES theory, so empathising, systemising theory. Uh, empathising is the internal drive to empathise with other people and to respond to their emotions with an appropriate sort of emotional reaction. Systemising is ultimately lawful and finite, um, things like right and wrong answers, uh, clear inputs and outputs. So uh, Simon Baron Cohen, um, who, who came up with this ES theory, uh, talks about brain types or personality types. So empathising brain types are categorised as type E or ex extreme type E um, or female brains um, and type S or extreme type S. Uh, systemising brains are also thought of as, as male brain types. Now not everyone who is female will have um, a brain type of E, uh, not everyone that's male will have a brain type of S. On average um, more people who are female will have uh, an empathising brain type and more people who are male will have a systemising brain type. Um, so I was interested in this, this, uh, this concept of ES theory in relation to gender and whether that might explain why there's more, uh, more men in fields like engineering and STEM subjects and careers and whether this idea of empathising might explain, explain that sort of phenomenon. Um, it's no secret that there are more men in, in engineering and fields like that and that those fields struggle to recruit women. So I wanted to probe this further. So for my MPhil, I looked at uh, year nine people, so uh, age 30 to 14 at a time when they are looking to make those all important GCSE choices, um, what they were thinking in terms of the subjects that they liked, but also what their sort of brain types, personality types were. So looking at um, sort of categorising them using um, an ES survey uh, developed by Simon Baron Cohen. Um, I measured uh, over 100 pupils uh, to look at their brain type and to see whether there was a correlation with their gender, which hadn't been done before. Uh, and there was a clear, a clear correlation between um, empathizers being female, systemizers being male. And then what I wanted to do was to interview a sort of cross-section of these people. So, so I interviewed empathizers and systemizers and also what we call balanced brain types, so people that are equally strong at empathizing and systemizing. Um, and what I found from the interviews um, wasn't a clear-cut preference to particular subjects from empathizers or females or from systemizers or males. Um, but what I did find is that the way that they spoke about the tasks and subjects that they enjoyed was really interesting. So, um, for example, empathizers spoke often about people and relating a uh, kind of real-world context um, to the things that they did in lessons to people. So they, they really liked seeing the value of what they were learning in schools in a real life context, whereas that was less apparent for, for the sort of systemizers. Um, what I did find from systemizers is that they, were, they really liked predictability. So they liked things like right and wrong answers. They liked to know whether they were right or wrong in a lesson um, and those sorts of things. So for example, if they were talking about writing stories, Empathizers might talk about the sort of emotional and personal connection with, uh, connection with characters, um, whereas systemizers might talk about the plot and the structure of the way that they were writing much more when they were talking about those sort of subjects and tasks in school. So, um, so therefore, um, because empathizers seem to like to talk about people and to have a real world context, that's something that I think STEM subjects can do. Um, can look at much more uh, in terms of engaging with those empathizers. So if we make empathy explicit within STEM subjects,
by using things potentially like these biomimicry tools where they, um, in things like design and technology or engineering, that might encourage more girls who are in the majority empathises to enjoy those subjects, but not only that, pursue uh, those subjects and careers moving forward. Um, and I think in doing that, if we do have more gender diversity in those STEM subjects, it feels like engineering, then the subjects themselves and those domains and those fields and those workplaces are going to be much more diverse because we'll generally have, genuinely have, people from looking at things from different perspectives. And it's been said that that feels like engineering, you know, we shouldn't learn um, facts and figures sort of by rote, we shouldn't be looking at statistics in isolation, but these products and these things that we're designing are for people and we need to consider that human element and that real life context. Um, and what I've been working on since I finished my master's degree at Cambridge, um, I've been working on a project called Designing Our Tomorrow and it's, it brings together the expertise of uh, the Department of Engineering, uh, the Engineering Design Centre at Cambridge, but also the Faculty of Education, so bringing together that pedagogy, that teaching and learning, as well as um, experts in the fields of engineering and design. Um, and we develop resources for STEM, so science, technology, engineering, maths, particularly design and technology. Um, we work with industry partners um, to bring in authentic challenges. So at the heart of what we do at uh, Design Tomorrow is, is something we call the three A's, uh, which unlike the three R's, all begin with A. Um, so we look at authenticity, so authentic problems and an authentic um, iterative design process which engineers and designers use in the real world. Um, ambiguity, so giving pupils the right level of structure in the tasks that they do, so not over scaffolding so the tasks become procedural, so allowing them the freedom uh, to interpret uh, and to have their own ideas, which leads into sort of uh, autonomy as well, so giving them the freedom to explore their own, their own ideas um, and ownership over those ideas. Um, and what we see at Design Out Tomorrow is that at the moment there's a sort of hole in the heart of STEM. It's been said that science and maths have explanatory power, so they explain the world around us, um, but technology and engineering have that power of application, so they have the, the ability to apply uh, that knowledge in a, in a real world context. And society we see as being the whole in the heart of STEM. So we bring in that societal need, um, which is something that I'm really passionate about in terms of offering empathisers that real world context that they need um, in their learning and in looking at STEM subjects. So I guess sort of moving forward, what I'm interested in looking at in terms of research is looking at empathy in terms of whether empathy, empathising capability can be enhanced, so whether you can become more empathetic by going through these processes, uh, but also whether if we engage empathisers by making empathy explicit within these subjects, whether we can um, allow pupils, empathisers who are in the majority female, to enjoy those subjects more and ultimately go on to pursue those subjects and careers in later life.